Good morning. If you're a bank, you're under a lot of pressure. You've got a lot of regulation. You've got a lot of compliance requirements. And it's not just if you're a bank. If you're a retailer, you've got more rules to work with than you've ever had before. And however good you feel your value proposition is, you've got pressure from disruptors. You know, I feel it too. I wake up every day, read the paper, and at least once a week, I read a quote from a fintech CEO talking about how the FICO score is obsolete, soon to be replaced by better technology. And then there's the millennials, and um, they seem to play by different rules. A little hard to understand them and what makes them tick. Um, so I want to spend a little time this morning talking about disruptors and incumbents and the landscape and the challenges we face. Uh, I guess I would start by saying we have some disruptors in the audience, and to you, I say thank you. Thank you for your innovation. Thank you for keeping us on our toes, forcing us to up our game. Thank you. And for the rest of us, incumbents, um, I think we have challenges and opportunities, and I want to talk about that. Um, lawyers are sometimes asked by their clients how they feel about the case, evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of the case, and would you rather have our case or their case? Who's, whose side do you like better? And I would tell you that I like our side. In the case of incumbents versus disruptors, I like the case for the incumbents better. And the answer, the reason for that is, is pretty simple. It's because we have customers. Incumbents have customers. And it's better to have customers than not, pure and simple. So I like the case, and I think we gotta, we'll, we'll explore a little, a little bit about it. Um, years ago, I was a McKinsey consultant, and we would, we'd approach many strategy projects, probably most strategy projects the same way, which is take the business, break it up into its component parts, and then think about each one of those parts and evaluate the risks, and more importantly, look for sources of competitive advantage. And I think we ought to do that here. We ought to take a look at that. You know, if you, take, um, if you take a bank and start to think about the pieces of the banking business, you know, at its core, at its most basic, it's two pieces. It's we take deposits, we make loans. Um, a McKinsey guy would make it more complicated than that. So, um, so imagine that we think about customer acquisition and customer interaction and customer management, um, everything in the customer experience ranging from branches to web and digital and mobile apps, the, um, the, the full range. And then there's payments and the infrastructure to support it. There's credit assessment and risk. There's extension of credit. And, and eventually, we have collections and recovery. If you look across all those pieces of the business, the disruptors, these fintech players, alternative lenders, they're after pieces of that business. And they're going to be successful in getting some of those pieces. They're bringing in innovation. They've got, in various ways, more interesting ways of talking to the customer. They might have a slicker app, a better UI. They're going to be successful in some of those dimensions. But I think that the incumbents have some real competitive advantages, some real strengths, and we should talk about them. So the first one, the first one is that banks enjoy a lower cost source of funds than non-bank competitors. And that's a major, major deal. Um, it starts with, as we all know, the, the eight basis points you pay for deposits. And there's times in the cycle when that's really a wonderful thing. We look forward to those times coming back. Um, but more importantly than that is the structure of the system. The, the fractional banking system gives banks a, a legally conferred right to manufacture money, and with it, leverage. And, and with it, the higher returns on equity that occur. And, and I would say, um, put aside for a moment the fact that there have been times in history when we had lower capital requirements, we had higher leverage, and higher returns on equity. It's still true today that banks enjoy a much, much lower cost of funds than everybody else. And it puts the um, fintech players, these alternative lenders, into a bit of a, a bind. And you're, you're watching it happen. There's a scramble on for these guys to figure out how to fund themselves. And they go to hedge funds. And we know that's not sustainable. That's not stable funding. 
and they exploit the peer-to-peer -peer network, and same thing. It's insufficient, also not stable. They securitize, they issue bonds. Some of them have figured out that maybe what they should do is be an origination's front end and pass the loan to someone with a balance sheet. At the end of the day, it is a huge competitive advantage for banks to have a low-cost source of funding. But it comes with a catch. The price tag for that is compliance with a lot of regulation, a very, very heavy burden of regulation. Now, it's well-intentioned, and it's heavy. And whether it's AML or KYC, if it's CCAR, if it's IFRS 9, Basel, it goes on and on. There's a lot of regulation. And I think the trick here is we have to figure out how to handle it efficiently, comprehensively, transparently. It's part of the business. It's something we got to deal with. And I would take a page from um, Jamie Dimon's advice. And he says, with respect to regulation, accept it and move on. And so enjoy that competitive advantage that comes with low-cost funding, but, uh, but make the other part of it work smoothly. Now, the second thing, the second source of competitive advantage for banks, it's not just banks, again, retailers, any institution that has a lot of consumer customers, is brand and trust. Now, we all know millennials, they're disloyal, they don't care, they, you know, they, they would trade certainly their privacy and maybe even a relative for an iTunes song. Um, <laughs> But I don't really believe that. I actually think all other things being equal, I think millennials, just like the rest of us, care about doing business with institutions that they trust. And all other things being equal, and those are key words, but all other things being equal, I think they'd rather do businesses with, business with businesses that have been around for a long time and, and have um, established credentials and trust. And this goes back, you know, if you think about it, it goes back to the fluted columns and the Corinthian caps and the limestone facade that are the image of the bank. It's the stability, it's the continuity, it's the safety. And it still matters. And it matters if you're a bank, it matters if you're a retailer, it matters for any kind of a consumer institution. And it can be lost in a blink. We've all watched the pain experienced by these venerable institutions that have experienced cybersecurity attacks. You look at Anthem, Target, Home Depot, the damage is incredible. And it's not just the dollar damage of remediation, the, the, the credit monitoring that they have to pay for afterwards. It's the damage to the brand. It's the damage to that trusting relationship. And so, We've got a real issue with this, and anybody who has customers and a brand to protect has to be super worried about it. And that's why CEOs at major institutions everywhere say their number one concern is cybersecurity. Now, we've got a long way to go. If you think about the state of the business today, when you have a breach, it's discovered months after the fact, six months after the fact. The data is long gone. We scramble. We do a little damage control. We try to identify the signature. We put up some defenses so that we won't let that one in again. And in the end, it's very reactive. And while useful, it's insufficient. And, and we've got to move to real time. And we've seen this movie before. If you think about the credit card industry, we process millions of transactions in real time and we evaluate them for whether they're fraudulent or not. And it's pretty straightforward. We score them. We say, okay, here's a transaction. How likely is it to be fraudulent? Well, has this consumer been with this merchant before? Are we in the right location? Is the behavior normal or not? We're taking the Falcon fraud technology that has made this possible and we're putting into cybersecurity today. And you'll hear more about it in, in the days to come. Um, we've, uh, we've entered into a partnership, which we announced yesterday with iBoss, so that we can um, identify hostile network traffic in real time. And I think it's this combination of the defense after the fact and the real time evaluation that I think is gonna get us to where we need to be.
But the main thing here is brand and trust, this key competitive advantage, you have to protect it. Okay, the third thing. The third thing has to do with the data. You have customers, and so you have transaction history, and so you have data um, about the customers. That's actually not the competitive advantage. The competitive advantage is doing something with the data. And if we can take the data and turn it into um, insights, if we apply analytics and turn it into decisions and then incorporate those decisions into workflows, we have an opportunity to extend and expand the relationship with a customer in a way that a disruptor doesn't, because he doesn't have the customers. So that's kind of a key thing. If you think about personalized medicine and where that's going, the future is we take your unique genetics and then we wrap a course of therapy designed specifically for you and your genetics to optimize your health. Now, why can't we do that if we're a retailer or a bank or anybody else interacting with consumers? Well, we know why. Well, you know, it's hard. It's hard to mix and match data. The data is siloed. We have legacy systems. They're inflexible. The decision making is across the organization and fragmented. It's expensive. It'll take too long. I'll be in my next job by then. And there, there's all these reasons why we don't do it. And yet, we have to do it. This is the source of competitive advantage over the disruptors. And if we're not leveraging the fact that we already have this customer relationship and doing something meaningful with it, we're, we're throwing away kind of the key thing. So those are the big three. Lower cost funds, but with it the regulation, and you've got to make it smooth. The brand and the trust, and you have to protect it with your life and the data, and you've got to start using it. We have, um, we have, and you'll learn in the coming day, day or two, um, all kinds of interesting predictive analytics to help you extend that relationship with your customers. We have the decision management suite where we've brought down the cost and broadened the applicability for putting decisioning into all kinds of things. And so I hope you'll, you'll spend some time learning more about that. I want you to have a great couple of days here. Thank you for coming to FICO World. And remember, it's better to have customers than not. Thank you.